Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to model and animate a kind of kinetic facade for a simple building using Blender and Geometry Node. So, let's get to it. We start by adding a plane and set the size to like 30 meters. Because we only need the edges, go to edit mode and delete only the face. Back in object mode, change the mesh into a curve. And add a bevel modifier. Set it to vertices and let's adjust the corners a bit. As a backup, duplicate the curve and place it in a separate collection and hide that collection. To make the floors, we can change the curve to a mesh, select all the edges and fill the middle place and extrude. As a reference, let's place a rectangle on the floor and make it about 4 meters. Now select the floor and add an array modifier and change the Z factor to match the height of the reference rectangle. After that, we can increase the count to assign the upper floors. After applying the array modifier, we can separate the floors by going to edit mode and choosing separate by loose part. So now we have all the floors separated, we can go to the top floor, set its origin to the center and extrude the side faces. Since we need a bunch of faces, we need to add loop cuts and extrude some of them inward and look for appropriate space for the facade elements. After making the loop cut, we can separate the edges that we want. Now there are three edges going all the way around the floors. Let's quickly rename them and jump to geometry node window. Select the outer edge and add a new geometry node tray. 
bring mesh to curve node followed by instance on point. And bring a curve line as an instance. As you can see, the points on the curve are not placed correctly. We can fix this by adding a resample curve node. This will place new points on our curve, but this time we have the freedom to control the point counts or place points with some distance between them. Bring curve to mesh and curve circle following the curve line to control its radius. Next, search for set position in sample curve. To control the rotation of the instances, we can bring capture attribute and spray parameter. Right now, we are sampling the position of our original curve and moving the instances along that specific curve. And we can control the movement of the elements by the factor value of the sample curve. The next thing to do is make them move continuously based on the timeline. To do that, let's bring some math nodes. Connect the first one to the factor. Set it to fraction and add scene time node and connect it to the value. This will calculate the movement within each second. Next, bring the other maths node, connect the attribute to the second value. Now, all the elements will be calculated on the scene time. To control the speed, it's just a matter of multiplying or dividing the scene time with some value. For this, let's use division and see how the speed is affected. Now that we have the movements ready to go, let's alter the shapes of the elements a bit. We can do that by adding a resample curve node followed by a set curve radius and connecting the radius with the spline parameter. This will assign all the points on the line to go from 0 to 1 with respect to the radius, but we don't want that. We want the radius to stay the same on top and bottom of the line. For that, we can use a simple trick with the color ramp node. Since the black is 0 and white is 1, let's set both colors to 1. After doing this, we will have option to add a third value and make that greater than 1 like 1.5 as you can see something has changed but it's not quite right let's change the interpolation to ease if I move the handles closer we can change the shape in that particular area and that's it let's add six more handles the same way we did before and place them where we want the shape to vary
The next thing to do is to create the height difference between the elements, which we can do with the geometry proximity. Add a curve to point node and set point radius to see the points clearly. Next, bring another set position node, then a geometry proximity, and connect that to the scale of the instances. Since we only want the Z value to change, bring combine XYZ node and connect it to the Z value. What's happening is that where the points are located, the instance scale is being affected. So if I decrease the number of points, you can see the elements will stay the same because there is no point near them. Let's bring our timeline and check to see if it's working correctly. From this point on, what's left to do is copy the geometry node data to the middle and inner edges then changing the direction of the movement and some proximity value. Because all the geometry node trees set up, things are easier from now on. Next, let's assign some materials and correct some values along the way.
For the glasses, we can duplicate faces, and for the frames, we can apply a wireframe modifiers. So we've reached the end of this video and I hope you've got something from this and you'll use it for your project. If you're new, please don't forget to subscribe. See you on the next one.